our goal is to help people start with reality and, and bring the benefits of reality capture to everyone. Um, the trend for reality capture has been going on for years now, but the device has got to a point where the quality and the efficiency is just good enough to really start to adopt it globally. Um, it really starts with reality capture data. And I think it's important to mention um, what's out there. Currently, there's three main ways to capture reality. There's one that is called photogrammetry. So photogrammetry is taking a bunch of pictures and generating from those different viewpoints a 3D model. Normally, you would expect to see this from drones, but more and more we're seeing applications coming from a cell phone, which is super exciting stuff. The second aspect is terrestrial laser scanners. So these are the high quality tools that have been used in the industry for years now that, are, that have gotten much faster and much better in terms of the imagery capture and the accessibility. In any city worldwide, there's someone that is willing to offer you the service to do 3D scanning. The, la the, la the latest technology is what we call SLAM. So SLAM is the ability to actually walk and capture. So you're not stationary. So it really allow people to capture larger spaces faster at the level of quality that it is what we consider really good enough to start building application on top of it. All right, so let's start with a nice data set that was provided by our partners, BIMStream. So this is a data set from a terrestrial laser scanner. The beauty of this data set really is the fact that we combine the precision of a high quality sensor and we apply textures on top of it. So this is all running live on my laptop. And what we're looking at is not really a compromise. Typically, when you look at meshed file, you expect it to be very low resolution. But that's what we've been trying to achieve over the last five years is this notion that what, a, what if point cloud was the compromise? So we're really trying to preserve the full accuracy of the data but still allow user with entry-level laptops to be able to consume our deliverables. So combining the imagery and the point cloud data and turning them into a usable format is really what we were trying to do at first. So how do you get a model like this? Super simple. You just use the point cloud data from a Leica products, Faro, or a partner ZNF, and you drag and drop it to your servers. The entire generation of the application is automatic. For a data set like this one that was about 80 gigabyte, we're talking about four hours to process. So it's a really streamlined process to go from massive point cloud data that are very hard to use into this very immersive and easy to use environment. And this, this environment is not, uh, it's not like, <laughs> Not not an uncomplicated room. This is a very detailed, uh, multi multi layered type of environment. Um, it's really just amazing. I can't even imagine how much time it would have taken an artist uh, to be able to try to recreate something like this. I think reality is pretty much impossible to replicate. There's no such thing as a straight wall or a machine that is perfectly straight. I mean, if we look on the top view of this space. Let's inspect it in the X-ray mode. If you were asked to generate this kind of drawing, it would take you a lot of time, especially if you don't work with point cloud data. But out of an app like ours, you can just go and export this out in multiple formats to just streamline your workflow to use with this data. Let's have a look at another space just so we can start to compare what what's out there in terms of sensor data and what quality can we expect from them. So I will open um, another data set from our friends at Navis, uh, the Navis VLX. So this one is a SLAM data set, which was explaining this type of sensor allow you to go extremely fast to capture environments. So this is a type of technology that is changing the game for the adoption in the market. Let me just find myself somewhere here oh and gosh. let you enjoy this beautiful environment. I, I want to live here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, my friend Nicola Viotto that brought this over and just walked with the sensor would be happy to make you a tour. His grandfather lives right next oh, to it. Yes, 
Yay. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so just just so you know, I'm watching the chat. People are blown away. Uh, the detail environment is amazing. Um, uh, uh, we're getting questions now about the hardware that we used to capture uh, this stuff, where the drones were used, or, or what what kind of uh, technology was used to capture. This was done with the Navis VLX. So simply walking around the site, taking pictures, and it took less than a day to do this entire site. And we're talking. A match aside, we won't take, we won't have enough time to do the entire tour, guys. I'm sorry, but again, I'll, let me find a way to show you guys the quality that's possible with a technology like this. Looking at the mesh model is important because it shows that it's not only a beautiful image, but that we actually capture a great amount of detail. So as I navigate around, you can see that this is quite a neat data set being captured just by walking around. You have plenty of details to work with. So I guess I can now jump into a bit more of the use cases and what, what are we able to achieve more than going and just looking at the data set. So let me one, open. One, one quick question while you're bringing that up. Um, can the models allow physics to be added uh, for say like a VR environment? Oh, absolutely. Uh, let me just show you. Maybe you can, drive two parts left. Yeah. you can drive a cyber truck in it. Yeah, finally, <laughs> it's here. <laughs> right, so absolutely. And the VR functionality in our app is already here. So you just have to connect your Tether headset and uh, you can go ahead. And that's why we also added the uh, support for USD so you can export assets from here and do uh, more advanced uh, simulations with the Omniverse. Absolutely. I will think we can bring it all together. So cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another question we're getting: Are you able to store other attributes as variables on the points in the point cloud? For example, setting an emissive attribute if we wanted scene lighting translated into the environment. Not yet. I think this is really something that the Omniverse team would love us to to work on, and I guess uh, time will will come, uh, but then at this point. Great question. Wow, this is crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're looking now at the model that is captured in the oil and gas field. And thanks to Endertech for giving us access to this model. In that case, we're talking Z and F sensors. So again, high quality terrestrial data. You'll notice that we have really, in this case, fine elements that are well described in the model. So when you're trying to really capture a site at full resolution and can't afford to spend a bit more time on site, this is a type of technology still today that is leading the market. This is kind of the quality that you will need if you want to make really advanced simulation or if you want to build a digital twin and start to aggregate information and intelligence to the model. This is why we're thinking, why not start with reality? This is an important aspect to help people understand and do, go beyond CAD. And I'll, I'll take a pause here, but this site, for anyone that went to it, this is what they relate to. Not a pastel color replica, not something that was created manually. This is reality. And what we're trying to achieve with a solution of uh, tool is to allow people to start playing with reality and go beyond looking. Obviously, this is all up to scale, but let me show you something that we developed early on to kind of start on this vision of uh, going beyond looking. So I can take this assembly and just circle around with a few points and you can clearly see what I'm selecting. And in that case, I can extract the object in real time. So let's save the object and fill the hole underneath. And this is really where we're starting to innovate and bring something different to the table. For us, our clients or facilities or the guys in the oil and gas, and they already have the complex tools. But having the ability to start to rethink reality and edit reality in real time is not something that is easy to do in any of the applications currently available in the market. 
So when you're trying to bring assets somewhere, maybe move objects from one location to another, or do what we call virtual staging, well, this is extremely complex. And when you're planning a project of millions of dollars, this is extremely hard to do on an AutoCAD floor plan or with detailed engineering tool. Now that I cut my asset, this is where we can start to think about the omniverse. So obviously, I'm picking a subset of the space, but this could be done with the entire site. But those assets now can be exported out, simplified, or constrained. But let's just start with the export functionality. So we know people will be working in a lot of different environments and software tools. So we allow users to use the DXF format for Autodesk Suites. Maybe they want to generate a point file, an OBJ file, or in that case, why not export a USB file? So let's have a look. I'm just going to select the USB and go to my omnibus and export this assembly of reservoir. For people that are more into the techie part, um, we do support the import and export respecting the global coordinates. So this means that if you're working elsewhere, you're able to put the machine exactly where it belongs and vice versa. So if you're modeling in your CAD applications using the point cloud data or our meshes, you can import your design back to preview to really showcase it to your clients or partners or bring it back to the universe. So um, this is really one of the key first functionality that we put forward in order to do this. Any questions? Um, first of all, uh, I can't tell you how uh, these comments we're seeing on the chat. They also can't believe what they're looking at. Um, uh, really, really amazing. Wow. Um, okay, so someone's asking, uh, how large is a mesh generated by this data? Can it be imported into game engines? Uh, does it have UV maps? Absolutely. So this is actually you can export this in OBJ, FBX, GLB. We it can even help you guys if you need to make level of details. This is obviously this is hundreds of millions of polygons, uh, but absolutely. Um, if you're thinking about Unity, Unreal Engine, uh, this is definitely doable and in the appropriate format to do it. Really impressive. Um, uh, we have a question: Are you using Reality Capture? Or is this all your own software to process all the different no, screen so data? We used reality capture in the past to benchmark our quality, but uh, we've been spending five years building our own system to mesh. So this is entirely proprietary to the company and it's cloud-based. So we're using 16,000 CPUs to make it extremely fast. We're talking about the ability to process 500 gigabyte of data entirely automatically on the cloud in a couple of hours, which is just impossible a uh, using a solid, yeah using a solution like desktop base. So that, that's the power of the cloud. Really, really impressive. Um, and so anyone who also w wants to try to um, uh, hang out with us after a live stream, we're gonna uh, try to head over to the community voice chat channel. Uh, so you can uh, turn on your microphone, your webcam if you want, and uh, speak to Nicholas and Michelle yourself uh, mm -hmm. and ask them uh, more questions. Um, but this is really just uh, uh, mind blowing. I, there's no other way to say it really, because really, um, uh, and can you tell us more about the kind of uh, workflow that uh, you imagine people will be uh, doing um, kind of initially? Right, so typically um, what we like to see for us is to see people come and try point cloud data to see a result. From there, typically users are experimenting for the first time in interactive 2D software. So they're able to finally see more than just points and start to interact with it. I had this open, so let me just jump on this to kind of give you an idea of what can be done for those users at first. Um, we made a partnership with Sketchfab, which is the largest 2D library in the market. So directly from the app, you can start to do virtual staging. So let me just pick a gas pump. I thought it was a kind of a fit for this space. And, and import it in the, the app in real time. So since we support the vast majority of 3D formats, this is done automatically nearly. So perfectly aligned, ready to go. And now I can take this model that I just downloaded from Sketchfab and put it inside reality. 
So pixel-based rendering is done and supported so any assets from the large library of Sketchfab can be imported inside the app. So this notion of being able to just copy paste and make your scene is as effective as could be. You can also bring any data from uh, you know, AutoCAD, Revit, and any other 3D software out there that uh, right. generates uh, the various whole formats that we support. So it's pretty yeah, open. For the, absolutely. So if you have an AutoCAD floor plan, you can import it in real time in the app. So you can just go, I don't have this specific one, but let me, let me show you. Let, let's open a DXF file. I can overlay my DXF file. I can select all my layers. I can just put it there. And now I can start to validate is, is the my floor plan actually good? Was it, what is it good? In that case, don't worry guys, it, it's not actually the scene. So it's not, it's not data. That's, that's kind of the starting point for many of the clients which are starting with only a floor plan of their space. And over the, the day after we left the site, they now have a 3D model to really navigate through. I love how the, the floor plan is color coded too. That's really helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one other thing that is super important um, is to kind of consider the past. So like I was saying a bit earlier, this site now could be exported back to AutoCAD. Let me, let me show you how it works. So I could take a subset of this space. Let me just take a little clip of an area just so we don't waste all our time on it. We're all here for the future, right? <laughs> but um, let me just select that clip. If I click that clip now, I can export it out. You saw previously that I could export a 2D floor plan, but let's just see what a Horto photo looks like. So a Horto photo is really a projection of the site, the top down, and it's an image. So it's much lighter to work with. So now if I go to my desktop and export it out as a Horto photo in DXF format, I'm going to be able to load this into traditional CAD file. So this is done. Now I can go to my desktop and I can import all, open this sort of photo inside application like AutoCAD, which is kind of cool because we have to realize that a big part of the brownfield environments, facilities are still using AutoCAD today. So we have to consider them and we really help them bridge the gap between what they were doing and what is possible now. So opening AutoCAD, I have this like this order photo that I could use to overlay or maybe update my floor plan. So this is really easy to do. You don't have to deal with hundreds of gigabytes of data. And this is all done through uh, a simple few clicks on the app. Amazing. I forget and to like open. I, we said, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so and one thing we've been working on recently is exactly that, to bring uh, those same bridges with uh, Omniverse. And so the first thing we've done is to enable this, the export of a USD files, uh, as uh, Nick showed you earlier. And I think, Nick, you also have a, a sample at some point we could show a, of a, a piece of an asset that was imported into Omniverse. I don't know if that's yeah. something you want to show now. Or... Let, let's, let's, let's try something hard. So earlier, right before this call, I took this platform that we have over here. So super high quality platform from the ZNS scanner um, and export it out to USDZ. So let's see, let's see how it looks inside the uh, Omniverse. Let me just close a couple of apps so we, we save it. Um, there we have it. So for this purpose, I'm just gonna use the create tool, a kind of my favorite one for so far. Um, So obviously we, we hope someday in the near future to have the connector to allow people to go directly from preview to the Omniverse. So that way we could streamline the export from entire sites to the Omniverse and really help people streamline their, their work between preview and the NVIDIA Omniverse. But for now, uh, you're allowed to export section up to the entire scene in the USDC format. And this is really the beginning of what's possible. So, Create allow you to just make your own world and start building on top of the universe. And in that case, I have the staircase, which is maybe small to read for you guys. So that's a 700 megabyte USDZ file. So let's try and cross fingers. Yeah. Is this, <laughs> this going to work? Like this is a massive mesh file. And this is the beauty, I think, of 
using new power design for leveraging graphic cards. Um, it's going to be super powerful. Well, I mean, I, I did not count. I'm sorry, but in a few seconds. That was pretty quick. A few seconds. In a few seconds, we have a 700 megabyte mesh file with textures in the USDZ format. That go to the release resolution that we can see the wirings on the pumps and we can identify clearly nuts and bolts of stuff that is half, maybe half an inch. And this was done all the way in real time. And obviously I'm streaming guys, but it's super fluid and it, it just works. So that's kind of where we see the opportunity for people to bring the, their facility data and start building their simulation experiences with reality. Yes, you're going to need to model again if you want to bring something new, but why try to replicate such complex environments when you can use there is a tool to make this streamlined? That, that's really what I think is the future. Someone's asking, is, is, is this similar to Instant Nerf? Can Instant Nerf give this detail as well? Good point. And I, I, I read enough uh, about it and I had my research team uh, prepare me for an answer for this. Um, I think the NERF is a very exciting opportunity in technology, but as it stands today, it's not ready to create meshed models. So what you're seeing in a mesh is a really, in a NERF is a really compressed way to describe a complex scene, which is extremely valuable for visualization purposes, but is not ready to be combined and regenerated as a model like OBJ or a USD format. The quality is not there yet. So this is not really a technology that can be adopted just yeah. yet to generate 3D models. Yeah, actually, one thing we didn't show earlier, but you know, because we have a true high resolution mesh, you can actually measure Things. You can measure the diameter of a pipe, the height of a, of a, a wall, and so on. So you actually oh, have the ability to measure when you're using a, a specific mesh. And that's really important from many aspects of doing you know, engineering work. Um, and so that, and also the interaction you see with the, the, the customizable avatars we have in Preview 3D would not be possible within a NERF environment. Yeah, uh, you're, you're right. I, I kind of skipped the basic stuff, but sometimes people are looking to learn a bit about really what can we do with this. Um, let me just head back to this model. Oh, I'll, I'll open a, let's, let's open another model of uh, photogrammetry oh. this time. So drone data, uh, if, you, yeah, if you wanted to. Uh, also, while you're loading this, one thing that we've done is that Preview 3D, we both have a web app and a desktop application. So you can actually have both environments depending if you want to use like a, a web experience for doing collaboration with your, your, your stakeholders and your peers in your company, for example. I was just going to ask, so that question came up several times uh, in the chat. People are asking uh, what kind of browser support there is for looking at the data on the go. So, yeah, so um, you can, uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so you can actually publish uh, projects with Preview 3D where, you know, you can even embed a Preview 3D uh, file into an iframe into your web page, for example. So there's many ways of integrating the data uh, in that way. So you can use uh, the web browser capabilities for remote collaboration, adding comments, notes to your, your projects. Uh, the desktop version is more on the advanced, you know, CAD integration type of tools because it requires a bit more computing power, uh, which is not necessarily always available from the, from the cloud. But uh, the, our clients have both uh, abilities available with our software, which is, makes it even more flexible uh, for, for their use. I know Very people cool. like polygons, so let's have a look at that. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> right, so. Oh my gosh. I know we, we often hear like unlimited level of detail. I mean, obviously there's no such thing as unlimited, but I think the technology today allow us to really just go into uh, quite a huge amount of uh, support for high quality meshes. So when we have uh, partners coming to us with a drone of this set like this one, what we're trying to, to tell them is really just tweak the setting to the maximum and drag and drop your OBG or FBX files or servers. So we allow the compression uh, tiling and level of details to then make those high quality assets available and consumable. I mean, if we're looking at in real time, I'm running this data set on 1.2 gigabyte of RAM and we're talking hundreds of millions of polygons. 
And for those uh, who have been following some of the Omniverse announcements, so we have a page that's set up uh, where you can apply for early access for Omniverse Cloud, which will enable you to leverage um, uh, the cloud uh, to yeah. use uh, different Omniverse apps, including Create. Yeah, any device, anywhere, uh, you can use Omniverse. Really, uh, yeah, I mean, I've said it before, but this is mind blowing. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I'm I'm curious. So, can you talk a little bit about some of the industries um, uh, or clients or partners? Like, what kind of verticals? Are like, uh, who who is, has been starting uh, the quickest to leverage this technology, and where do you see this going in the in the coming months? So, I come from food and beverage industry. So, honestly, these are one of the most complex like vertical that we can think of. If you think about food and beverage, you start in a facility, as soon as you enter the door of the production area, it's stainless steel all the way to the back door. And every time you change a packaging on a product, on a product, you have to make a new production line. So these guys are constantly rethinking reality of their space. And this is really where we saw our earlier adoption. So engineers, project managers and facilities that were really just relying on AutoCAD, now they call us and they use 3D scanning experts to start having digital twins of their space. So when they communicate and collaborate with other stakeholders, they don't have to bring people on board. They can just share a link to preview and it's like, hey, you, you need to come to site to take measurements? Well, go ahead, just, just use our preview app. So the way we works is that for every paid clients we have, we offer them the opportunity to invite up to 50 collaborators. So for people that are looking to just maybe access the web, they can do just that. So this idea to help them in the food and beverage led us to be able to kind of understand this need for engineers and project managers to have something better than just a TV floor plan. And it's been really exciting to see the, the, what we call the land and expand. So the first clients calling us back and us going from one facility under management to multiple facilities over the years. And this is really what allowed us to kind of build a series of tools that are very simple, but extremely valuable to them. Yeah, I would, I would add that, you know, any industries where you have a lot of machinery, a lot of complex equipment and facilities that are, can be very large, you know, it's, it's, it's borderline impossible to truly create all of that within your CAD environment, like you know, unless you want to spend like a lot of time. So scanning with the different uh, scanning hardware out there and using Preview 3D is a really quick way of getting the highest quality and precision and the engineering tools and the tools you need to do additional other work. If you're thinking about health and safety, maintenance and operations of your facility. And then, like I said, we showed you earlier, you know, bring all of this into Omniverse for doing advanced simulations and other type of integrations. It's all designed to be uh, integrated within the workflows of our clients. Yeah, and sometimes the import is not perfect. Um, <laughs> Murphy so Law on any demo. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm doing exactly what you should never do. So my my lead software engineers gave me the beta version this morning, and I'm using the beta in <laughs> during a live stream on the oh, never. So it's don't do great. Yeah, don't do like I do. Like I, I I'm. I like to live uh, dangerously sometimes. Um, That's awesome. That's the way to live, right? Um, so you talked, obviously, you showed off the USD uh, support, yeah. um, which is amazing. And you briefly mentioned a connector. Uh, so can you share anything else about a connector? Is that, is that uh, on the roadmap right now? Is it is it uh, happening for sure? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the one part actually we've been talking to engineers at Omniverse as we speak about the type of integrations we want to do. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of the great tech that we've built in preview is not only the meshing capabilities to create these high resolution objects, but also it's the whole like level of detail system that we've built that allows the level of interaction with millions of polygons. And so that's these are the type of things that we'd like to bring to the universe. And so we're definitely working on that actively. Uh, we don't have any announcement date yet on what that's going to be available. If there's anybody on the channel that wants to be working with us as a better tester on these type of things, Ari, you can use the USD support uh, that's already into the software shipping today. Uh, more than happy to talk to you uh, afterwards if you want to be working with us and, and seeing where we're going to push this integration with the Omniverse connector in the future. 
That is awesome. That's great. And I'm sure we're going to have more than one person that will take you up on that offer. Um, I guess the easiest way to, to take advantage of that is anyone can DM me uh, on Discord, uh, or you can post in the live streams channel we have on Discord, uh, just reference the stream. And Michelle's generous offer to uh, to test, that would be great. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And then actually, Michelle, you, you just posted a free trial uh, link. For yeah. anyone who can't see it, um, uh, for example, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, cloud. Well. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay, great. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can just sign up. It's a free trial, and there's a few sample uh, assets there, so you can actually try them yourself on both the web browser and the desktop. And you can see how you know simple, easy to use, and powerful it is uh, from the get go. I, I'm just imagining like uh, all the Isaac Sim users uh, bring your 3D mm -hmm. scans in, and you can program your robots. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Exactly. Hey, Michelle, do you want to do you want to try to connect maybe to this? Space and uh, let's see if I can show. I them. actually I am not set up the right way. I, I didn't think about that, so oh, <laughs> can't. Uh, all good. I had to try. Uh, it. It, it, we yeah, did for, forgot to mention that um, we understand reality within the market. So we also offer this classic view mode of navigating 360 image. So in some cases, for people that are really not looking into the 3D space, we do support and offer through the application and obviously now i'm web-based um the ability to navigate the gate to the imagery we do try to make the mesh look as good as um, the image so you don't really have to make a compromise but in in cases you guys are more familiar with the virtual tours um, you also can do the same inside the app so what i'm showing now is a combination of a dim model so an ifc file that we imported inside the app and published as a layout. So what are users doing with our app? Often we see clients trying to do some design analysis with partners. So obviously you have this engineer combining reality with the new coming projects and importing it and making a layout. So what we've created is a way to publish the desktop layout to the web so then you can invite people over. In that case, if I just go and share, I could create a public link. I can invite users to my organization. So it's really an easy way for people to start to invite people over in inside their design and do their design review based on reality. So let's just reopen it. Um, that's amazing. Collaboration is definitely one of the things that uh, is key for uh, for Omniverse in, in, in terms of being able to support. So that's great. There's so much. Um, it's crazy how transformative it is when you, uh, in the past, you really just had to take turns working on something. And now you can yeah. actually uh, work together. Uh, it's also super helpful. Uh, I've heard from teachers who have told me that uh, it's very helpful in teaching students also. Um, and also managers have said uh, that uh, being able to watch their colleagues um, work in real time has also been extremely transformative because you're able to kind of point out different tips and tricks um, in the workflow that uh, that saves time. So true. I think it, it, if I look back at what I was doing before joining, well, joining, I guess, founding preview, um, the biggest challenge we have it's not always the tool, but it's the ability to communicate and collaborate. Right. I think like reality speaks for itself. And when you, you have a group of people working on a project, their biggest challenge is to have the idea in their head pictured clearly enough for others to understand it. Um, when I think about a facility, oh, hey, Mac. So as you can tell, uh, we have also have live avatar for design reviews. So now I have one of my colleagues that just joined, as you can see, appearing and flying around the space. Um, so the notion that we're trying to help people communicate means that we can break the silos between the technical people and maybe the workers on, our, on the factory floor. The engineers, they don't work in the, inside the facility and vice versa. So using reality to kind of just help them communicate better. Like, what do you think about this new equipment? Is it the right place? And 
Same goes for going upwards. To get the buy-off from your CEO and chief of operation, reality is super helpful to do it. So that's really what I think helps the most in terms of why reality capture data and engineering projects. Yes, taking precise measurements, but this is already done. How can we help people communicate and collaborate better? That's been a, a key aspect of our successful part. I, I'm also, I, can see from, I can't believe the quality of, uh, of the materials here. It's really nuts. Exactly. And so you can imagine, like, if you want to, you know, extract the different assets, the machines that you have in your factory and, and generate your asset library and ultimately connect that to your asset management solution. Definitely, that's one thing that we're seeing that we're doing more and more with our customers to enable that with the application. Is one of your colleagues, Pierre, or is this yeah, really broken? So, yeah. yeah, well, he, he's the one that gave me the beta version. So now he's looking down to me and oh, he's like, he's, why did you do he's looking that? looking down on you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And so one of the things that he, he brought to the application with his team is this idea that we should be able to use this kind of tool, which we call Memo, that is just released this week, um, to allow people to kind of put their, like, their idea down. So in car to start their colleagues and be like, hey, why is this machine here? And the way we've looked at this is really to make it similar to what we've seen in other applications, like uh, to not name them the Google Suites, kind of starting to attach data to your space and track issues. So at the end of the day, you do your design reviews and you come out with a checklist of stuff to answer, which is really the most meaningful aspect of the meeting is to come up with a to-do list to then move forward. So this tool really allow users to start to maybe attach files videos, images linked to other um, websites and whatnot to start to aggregate this kind of design review and go to the next step and execute. So kudos to, to the team for starting this kind of live collaboration tool and help the people make their workflow better. Yeah, I'll second a comment we just got about the lighting. The lighting is fantastic. Really, oh. like, you know, it looks so true to life. <laughs> Thank, thanks, and I mean, this is an RTC data set, and if you go into your settings, you can always play with it. So it's all real time on the web, and you can adapt your contrast. My team tell me that I like too much contrast all the time, but I appreciate the comment. I was not that bad after all. <laughs> Pierre's watching you like a hawk. Oh, trust yeah. me. He, he is. He is. He's watching me. So that's really, um, I guess, the main overview I wanted to have with, the, with you guys today. This um, is amazing. Cool. 